Hi everyone, so welcome to Talkie Talks, a series of sharing sessions where small but mighty businesses share about their motivation on how they started their business and their journey in entrepreneurship. My name is Cindy and I'll be your host today. So this sharing session is brought to you by RISE. RISE is a program um, that equips young people with entrepreneurship and also the knowledge of starting their own business. And RISE is supported by City Foundation. So we believe that entrepreneurship is not only for the big companies that has like high technology, but also for small and mighty businesses such as Kopila. So during hard times like the MCO and the current uncertainty in our economy and also our social climate and status quo, we want to showcase stories of small local businesses that are preserving and also chasing their dreams despite the circumstances. So I'm happy to welcome our guest for today. Alice from Papila. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So welcome to Taki Talks. We are honored to have you here today. So like before we get started, I'll just go through the whole agenda regarding the whole entire session. Yeah? So we start off with our welcoming and then we'll have a short sharing session where Alice will share about his experience in starting Copila as a business and why he had decided to persevere with such a business and also then we'll move on to our Q&A session where we will be answering all your questions and your please submit the question or the question you please in the chat box below and finally we'll end off with a small promotion on RISE Online 2020 a new program that RISE has started for this year and also to share about our next Gaffertech session. Okay before without further ado let's start. So Alifin can you share a bit about your business or how you started your business? Uh, Popular was established in 2015. It all started during the last year of my degree in a mm. university foundation master. So ever since then, I just started to bring the brands here to follow the course. So right now, we are located in Damansara Purana, where we serve like 25 different types of things, but mostly coffee. Oh, mostly coffee. Uh, so, Alice, can you move your mic closer so we can hear it, hear you clearer? Yeah, sorry, yeah. So, did you, did you have, like, what did you study for your degree? Uh, I study technopreneurship. It's actually technical plus entrepreneurship. Uh, it's okay, a okay, program okay. founded in my university. So, it's actually uh. to prepare you to be both in a corporate and in the technical world. Uh, okay. So have, why, what, what inspired you to create Kopila? Was it like your love for coffee, you know, or maybe your friend suggested you should start a business? Okay, like previously before I started Kopila, I already have two businesses, but it's already collapsed. The first one is a printing business and then the second one is ice cream. Uh. So I got the idea during a lecture, so I was thinking, what are the things that I love and I can express it into a business? So why don't I just give a shot in a coffee? Lah? So before the... Before I started that, I was thinking like, it might save me more compared to ice cream business. But then, mm. no, it, it do really cost me a lot. So, we just put it this way. I have no turn back anymore, just like that. Mm. Yeah. So, that's why I just like, just continue my journey in coffee. Because it's like, I have so much passion in coffee. So, I just decided to pursue my business in coffee. Mm. So you are the one that like kind of like bring the whole idea of starting Kopila with your partners or is it more of like a collective discussion? Uh, previously, I was alone. So I convinced them to join me. So I, I, I told them, I said, like, I cannot make you rich, but if you really want to learn, you are good to go. So I can teach you everything that I know. And then it's just like, I need your help. So mm. in order like for marketing and stuff like that. Like, because if I mm. do things on my own, probably I just want to collapse like, anytime soon. So, mm. yeah. so when you said that like, in your degree, you learn about technical, like what sense of like technical are you talking about that help your business right now? Okay, uh, it's basically the same way. Uh, if you're taking a uh, business administration, basically I just learned the same thing. It's just the fact that there's an additional of uh, basic engineering, IT, and oh, stuff. Oh, like okay, okay, okay. Alright, interesting. Wow, I never knew that like such a course existed. Oh, okay, ah, yeah. that was. Existed, yeah. mm. So did you have to like uh take like an ex 
ex like external cause to learn about coffee or have you like, experimented with it throughout the year? Okay, frankly saying, uh, I do learn things the hard way as I learn everything by myself. I don't go to mm. class because it's so expensive oh, and true, it true, cost true. me a lot. I don't have, because I start with a very, very minimum budget. Yeah, that's mm. right. Right. So if like, let's say I would like a cup of coffee or like uh, I am, because of the whole M like post-MCO situation right now. So how do we find you or get to get your product or you know? Uh, okay, uh, since the MCO started, I mean like the early stage of MCO, I have like no income for two months. So I decided to do a delivery service where our new product line is a BTLT series and you can check out on our Instagram. So it's actually a portal mm. coffee where I provide uh, six different kinds of flavor. And we mm. have the whole Clan Valley every Tuesday and Thursday. Mm. Yep. So can you share to the audience like where if I want to go to your shop, where is it located? Or are you open which days of the week? Okay, uh we right now we are located inside a Manara OBYU in a lobby area. So it's basically very easy to find us. You just search on Waze or in a Google Map. You're definitely gonna find us here. And mm. it's very easy. So if you ask me the landmark, I would say not far from IKEA. Mm. Ikea Damansara, yeah, it's not far from that. Yeah. Maybe like mm. five minutes drive from Ikea. Mm. Yeah. So do you open every day? Yeah, I open from Monday to Friday from eight to six. Mm. But if emergency then only I'm closer. So we are currently we are not operating on weekend because there is no tenant on weekend. So just mm. like uh for me like personally weekend is for my family la time for my family. Mm. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um moving on to our next question, it would be what were the challenges when you first started your whole business and how did you overcome them? Was it like trying to get people to trust your brand or getting revenue? Can you share a bit about your struggle? Okay. My biggest struggle is I didn't even get support from my family. Oh so, yeah, my family don't even trust me like I said, I want to do this. So he said, like, what is the point for you? You study up until master and stuff. So you still want to pursue yourself in the coffee world. So I said, what I did was I just proved them wrong. So when I started to move to the Masala Padana, so they see, they see me, like, doing well. So it's like, okay, they give full support. Uh, in terms of uh, capital, yeah. Because, like, I start a very minimum budget. But throughout time, I just, like, try to add things uh, to my place, uh. Because like I don't have that much capital on my business. So that's all. Uh, revenue is, uh, you know, it's a normal thing for business. Uh. But mostly capital and support from your family, moral support. That is mm. the biggest challenge. Uh. Mm. So how, yeah. how was it like starting a business without support? Was it really hard? Like did you ever felt at one point that you want to give up? Or what motivated you to like really push forward without such support? Okay, what I did was I proved them wrong. I just, you know, uh, sometimes I just like ignore them. But in a way, like, I just do what I, do when I want to do. So I just ignore. But sometimes they, doesn't mean like they didn't support you. But they just like, they question you what everything that you did. So I was like, okay, just keep update them. Oh, we are doing this. We are, this is the next step and stuff. And when they know the updates, say, they know what they want to do, uh, what I want to do with my things and my business. So they just realize that this is me and this is what I choose. And yeah, this is what, I want, this is what I'm going to be in the coffee world. Uh. So I just prove them wrong. Yeah. Because like my parents is, they, not, uh, they, they are not uh, business minded people. So, so they just like have their stable monthly income. So you know, uh, people who are doing business, sometimes the income is not stable, right? Every month. So it's just like as mm. long as I survive, I just give them some pocket money and stuff. I pay for mm. the bills, so they know like, that I'm surviving. Mm. Yeah. Right. So to continue thriving is the best key to overcome such challenges, right? Yeah. Because so, you you mentioned that you started off as yourself to start this business, right? Alone in this business. So how did you initially gather funding to actually open the shop or like pay for rental, so on and so forth? 
Okay, uh, it's all about taking risks. When when we first get this place in Daman Sarawak Penada, it's actually the story, I have nothing to hide with you guys. I mean like, I pay the place for 43000 So uh. we make a deal with the previous owner to pay everything within one year. So from there, we're just collecting money from the daily sales and try to settle everything in one year. Thank God that we managed to do that. And right now, this place is completely ours. Now. Wow. Yeah. It's actually the, how you call that, the art of, of convincing people uh, to oh, make okay. a web for one year. Uh. It's really hard mm-hmm. because like, the discussion took us almost a month uh, to convince them. Mm. Yeah. So how did you like get like funding for like your equipment? Because I understand like buying the machine is expensive, buying your cups and all the pictures and all is expensive. So how did you initially, get it? was it out of your own pocket or did you have to like go and pitch your idea to someone? I gave up all my savings to my business. Like if this business collapsed, yeah. I also collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. We, we are not taking any loans. Uh. It's like, yeah, mm. we, we do things like uh, if we can, so we just like, we try our way. La. Mm. Our own way. La. We, we try to avoid that thing. La. But yeah, throughout time, you know that you still need business loans and stuff. La. But right now, we are good. Mm. So you took a very big leap of faith into this business, la, basically. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. So you mentioned that you learn coffee on your own. Did you face like a big challenge and try to learn new coffee or the art? Making coffee. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, back then, four years ago, when I first started this thing, in Malaysia, in Malaysia scale, eh, it's basically very simple. So it all started at the order point. So you order your drinks, a barista make your drinks, you wait for your drinks, and then at the pickup point, just take your drinks. So when I first started, I always wonder what is happening behind the bar. So. I didn't get that. So when, when I first traveled to Indonesia, I asked the barista how you make because like I only have AeroPress that time, it's some sort of like coffee, mm-hmm. ice like that. How to make this drink? So he said, like, do you really want to learn? I said, Yes, of course, if you let me, I would love to. So what the answer I never expected. So he said, like, if you really want to learn, take the apron and stand behind the bar. And 2016. That was the first time I stand behind the barista bar. So I was like, okay, I said like one fine day I'm gonna stand behind my own bar. So mm. I did that from Indonesia. So that's like, how I first started and he's the one that encouraged me to not to give up in the coffee world, but from my coffee friends in Malaysia as well. So you really get inspired by other people who start their own business in coffee. Yes. And mm. one movie that inspired me the most is uh, Philosophy Copy. It's an Indonesian movie, so that's inspired me the most like, to start this business. Yes. So, do you have like any advice for like entrepreneurs to learn about things that they are interested in without any spending any money? Like for for your case, you learn coffee. You try to find ways to learn coffee. So. How, what would you be, what would you advise other entrepreneurs that say, if I'm interested in starting my own business, but I don't have that much capacity to spend on learning a new skill, what would you advise them to do? Okay, uh, if anyone asked me the same question, and my answer would, would definitely be the same. In business, basically, there are three things. Three things, three most important things. Are, the first one is a connection. In, it applies in any kind of business. First one is a connection in the industry itself. If let's say like me, myself, it can be so know who's your supplier, your friends and stuff, the one that's going to support you. Second is actually your uh, relationship between you and your customer or your client. And if you manage to control these two points, number three will always follow you in which is revenue. Lah. So when we talk about capital, if I say like you need a bigger capital, I start my business with a very minimum capital. Mm. So yeah, I would say capital is not an issue la, as long as you have passion. And most importantly, know what you want to do. La. You must have passion in your business. So mm. even if you have money, it doesn't necessarily like you just drop your money and then you wait things to happen. No, you don't need passion. La. Like me myself, it's a purely passion business. Mm. Yeah. Right. So finding connection and really 
finding people to talk to uh, before entering the industry. Right. Great. So what were the challenges that um that your business is facing right, during MCO and how has that changed now after we have opened and it's not as restricted as before? Like could you share about like the challenges you face and like how did you overcome, you know, in terms of like the restriction you cannot go out, you know, you, you mentioned that you created the BTLD as like an uh more of like a delivery service. Can you share a bit more about that? Like how did you like manage to um, overcome that? Okay, the biggest challenge in during MCO is how we want to sustain our business. And that's the thing. Mm. So it's like, uh, since like I have no income for two months, so I realized that I need to get out from this place and to, to start to find my meal like, because this is like my only income. So that's when the idea come out. Like. So we decided to do a delivery service on how we can, especially to my regular customer. Like. Because like my regular customer, most of them just live around my place. So we decided to deliver them the coffee instead of mm. making them working up to us. Like. So mm. what happened was I just asked a permission from a police and from local authorities. We got all the permission and stuff. So we just like do that, like. do the proper way. Like. Yeah, and it's actually mm. just like an alternative for us to find extra income like, because that like, we only depend on coffee, so that's why I think like this is the the only way for us to sustain our business. Mm. So adapting to the surroundings is how you guys manage to sustain yourself. Right? Yeah, like just like mm. the government is like adapting to new norm, right? As well, this is a new norm for us now. Mm. Mm. But right mm. now, thank God because of, like. Thailand started to come in, so like, yeah, mm. Mm. I can consider it back to normal. Mm, right. Okay. Um, because like a lot of people nowadays, um, they, they, they think that, you know, entrepreneurship is for somebody that should be older and like, you know, more experienced. But what do you, do you think in your perspective, young, should young people like, start their own businesses and why? Like, what is your rationale behind that? Uh, age doesn't matter. Like, age is just a number. Mm. So before I started my business, I always have the thought, like, if I don't start today, other people will. If I mm. didn't take the opportunity, other people will. That's, it, like, that's how things started to encourage me to start this business. Mm. Yeah. So would you encourage young people to start their own business also? I, yes, if you, if you know... I mean, like, you have to look things in a bigger picture. Mm. You have to say, okay, if you see one, uh, one problem that happens around you, and you took that as an opportunity for you, and definitely you can start business. It doesn't matter whether you are old, you are young, as long as you see, as you yourself as a problem solver, then you take the opportunity. That's my advice. Mm. Yeah. Uh, see yourself as a problem solver, wow. That's really good advice. Uh, okay. yep. So that is all for the question I have to ask for you. But now we're moving on to what the audience have to ask. So one of the audience asked, um, how did you differentiate your products compared to your competitors? You know, knowing that you know, the coffee industry is a very dense industry in Malaysia. So how did you make yourself stand out like very unique? Okay, uh, Coffee Lab basically is very simple. Our main goal is actually to become affordable premium coffee provider where we believe that coffee is not a luxurious thing and it should be shared by everyone regardless on which level you stand in your life. So where we consider, I mean like, we offer a cheaper price but at a premium quality. So that's Coffee Lab. And and ever since that, that is our main goal and that is our fundamental and that is our backbone. So that's what differentiates us from others. I mean like currently right now, uh, most of the cafes started to drop the price and everything. But what differentiates us is that we offer 25 different types of drinks to our customers. So we can mm. customize our drink based on our customer preference mm. and how we serve our customers. So that differentiates us. 
Okay. Wow. Okay. So. Wow. Okay. But basically, you change your whole business to fit our Malaysian like taste buds and like our choice in coffee. Okay, that's a good um, a good thing to learn for all the audience out there. Right. The next question is, what is your advice or guide for making connection in the industry? Because some, because the audience asks, they might feel intimidated by other players in the industry because they are essentially their competitors. So how did you make connection in the coffee industry? Okay, first thing, first quite important, the most is you make friends with them, you gain their trust. And definitely they will help you. Like, I have my own personal coffee guru. So he's basically some coffee master, I would say, in Malacca. So when I first met him, I almost had a fight with him. But then throughout time, I learned his way. So I just like, we started to become friends. And from there, he, uh, he helped me a lot in the industry. And he encouraged me not to give up. So that's the mm. thing. What important the most is that you make friends and gain their, gain their trust. You mm. don't lose them as a competitor. Lah. As long as you have the thought like, with their presence, they will make the market more diversified for customers and stuff. Even customer more options, then it should be good. You should know that you have your own customer base. And for me, Coffee World, it's an open world. Yeah. So everyone have an opportunity. As long as you have you put yourself in it and you put your passion in it, you should be good. Doesn't matter whether you came, you want to see me as a competitor, go ahead, but I'm not seeing you as uh, that way. Like. I just see you as a company who make the market more diversified. Mm. So where do we essentially find all these industry players? Like from your perspective, how did you find, um, how did you find a place where you can start making connection? Okay, uh, usually it all started like, from a friend to another, so they just suggest, mm. hey, do you, if you want a coffee, why don't you try this guy, so why don't you meet him, so usually I just go to the place and I try the coffee, and then I ask them, do you provide this kind of service, so sometimes it's, it's all friends, so it's just like, hey, I need this thing, do you have this thing, so oh, I don't have, but other people have, so just like that. Mm. Yeah. So like, from friends to friends, what about? That's why, because like the coffee industry in Malaysia basically very small. Everyone know each other. Like. Mm. And even though we mm. don't personally know them, but you know them. Like, mm. like mm. me, myself, sometimes people don't call me Alif. So they just call me, oh, that popular guy. So they, so right. Like, okay. Like that. okay. <laughs> so, so one of the audience asked, like, how do you evaluate um, risk in your company? Evaluate risk in my company. Yeah. Mm. Uh, honestly, I'm a risk taker, but mm. my partner is not. One of my partners is not a risk taker. So as long as you have both of these people in your organization, it should be good. As like me myself, I have the thought that I just do things my own way, and then the outcome I will think it later. But my partner usually how he thinks that. He will think like 10 steps ahead for me. So he said, like, if mm. we do this, what is the outcome? So he will just give me advice. Uh, but the decision maker is purely on me. But it's just like, I, I listen to them. So we just sit and discuss. Uh, because, like, risk, it can be anything. So mm. it can be. So it's like, for example, I would say the BTLD series. What if? If we are doing this uh, delivery service and then all of a sudden there is no support from our customer, what is the mm. outcome? So what happened was we just like we just go on our way lah. So we just do it and we see what how's the outcome and everything. And throughout mm. time, we try to maintain because like how we generate money is from our customer, right? So every time mm. we serve them, we ask their feedback so that uh, we can at least. Uh, how to say this? Improve uh, in the future. Uh, mm. The feedback from the customer is very important uh, because, mm. like, we really take good care of our relationship between us and our client and our customer. So mm. The feedback is very important. Sometimes people don't listen. Uh, like some business owners, they don't want to listen to feedback, right? Uh, mm. So we're not thinking that way, lah. Uh, so we just like we try to listen. What is the problem?
problem and we try to solve, solve the problem with them. Mm. Yeah. So always have two two sides of the stories in every company, one risk taker and one you know risk planner. Yeah. You you should you yeah. should have that. Like if you have a team, that's the most important thing. Lah. So because like mm-hmm. most of the business owners they are not risk they are risk taker but the partner not lah. So you have mm. to get things out. And that's the best advice that I could give. Mm, balance things out, yeah. Okay. Um, how did you find like your partners or how did you find the perfect partner to like make your team in Kofida? Okay, uh, one of my partners is my cousin, my close cousin. Uh, and mm. he's the one that is not the rich taker. Right. So definitely we grew up together. Lah. And one of my other partners is my best friend since high school. So basically, uh, why I choose him as my partner is that we are mid-income family came from that kind of background. So I said like, until when? So do do you want to improve yourself? So do you want to be rich? I mm. said. So I said like, why don't you just follow me? So mm. we try to make change to this world. So we said like, okay. During the early stage of the foundation of Popular is that they, I do things alone. So he just mm. gave me like one year, two years, then he decided to join me. And from there, we worked together. So he mm. got his own talent, I got my own talent. So we did mm. things up. Did things up. Mm. So you really chose and like handpicked people around you that you really trust with the whole yeah. business. The first mm. thing first is trust. Like you don't trust your friend, you don't trust your partner, you cannot become partner. Mm. So at mm. least if you decide on something, so they would agree. And how to say this? Uh, you need to find someone who can follow your idea. So, mm. so if someone who are against you, maybe in a good way or in a bad way, it can things can happen. Uh. Yeah. So right. They like. Uh, in 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 the Malay term, uh, in the Malay term, how this how do they say it? Satu uh, kepala lah, for example. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that finally how, someone that share your vision in your business, lah. Yeah, yes, yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to our very last question before we end this session is what is your marketing strategy or any advice on tackling social media? How okay, I just tell you how we did in Popular. So we just mm. do do things in our own way, in our own pace. So we don't follow others. You see sometimes people are promoting things and sponsored and whatever. So we don't do that. So we just like we do things our own way, in which sometimes you should know your audience better before you started to mm. post things in social media. Social media do really help. So what we did was, we tried to uh, constantly posting uh, new info. Sometimes every morning, what we did was, we just like mm. post photo of my first coffee of the day. So sometimes mm. we relate that with a positive quotes. And then mm. that's how we stay connect to our customers. And then we keep, and maybe one, if you have something to boost, let's say your product, right? So you boost your product lah. but then I didn't spend that much lah. I think maybe I just spent two or three dollars for per promotion for that things lah. sometimes you can mm. boost lah, but don't boost every day lah. because like, sometimes people like, can get fed up with your things right every mm. day see the same thing so people tend to get fed up but what mm. important the most is that you know your audience and it can happen to age, your the interest and stuff, so you should know your target market. So that's the most important thing to do. Mm, so and knowing your target audience. Yeah, yeah, know your target audience. Know your target audience and then know um, how to interact with your target audience and then when to interact with your target audience. Once you tackle mm. them, it should be good for you. They will find you. And sometimes what we think in Popila is we let our quality speak for itself. So mm. we don't we don't really promote like we try hard to promote our product but we let our quality speak for itself. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then and then sometimes like uh we have 
our different approach uh, previously is like one of my partner have the privilege to work in Astro so what he did was he just sometimes he saw all the artists so he just let them to see our tagline but they we don't let them to perform our work right just say the tagline and then we change we started to change we say like mm. we cannot do this anymore so maybe we try other way so we let yeah. the customer to come to our place and let them try our coffee and then from there we let our quality speak for itself that's all right great thank you so much Alif Din for your insight so everyone that was Alif Din from Kotila sharing about his experience at Take Talks brought to you by Rice and supported by City Foundation what really in, what really in motivated Alif Din was his passion in coffee and his background in entrepreneurship that helped him persevere. And I hope you, all of you feel inspired and motivated by Alif Din. I sure was to like work hard and achieve your goals in life and make sure you remember all his little advice and insight about his, how to start your business and how to persevere. So if your goal is to start a small business or to learn more about entrepreneurship, Please, uh, uh, Rice, Rice is starting a new program called Rice Online. It's a free course, a free online course that allows you to take uh, different classes at your own timing for free from June to October 2020. So you can go online according to your own timing and then go through our course. And if you're scared or you're not sure about joining this, you can always bring a friend in and go through the, jo the journey of completing this course together. So this is our, la our latest entrepreneurship training program that will equip you with all the, all the basic requirements of entrepreneurship and really give you a, a good insight about how the business industry works and what you should consider before starting your own business. And also don't forget to sign up for our next Talkie Talk session, which is with um, uh, Shemay. Shemay is the founder of May in December, which is a florist. And before she started off this business, she actually has, she was working in the nursing industry. So if you're interested about her story and her journey in entrepreneurship, make sure you um, sign up for her session. And moving on is we'll just show you our social media handles or where you can find us and keep in track about what we're doing in RISE. So just make sure we have our Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube and also our website that you can go and refer to. And see you guys later. And thank you so much, Ali Din, for your sharing session. And we hope you all the best in your future endeavors. Okay, thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank guys. You. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.